So I bought this truck new back in 2012 and I put 135,000 miles on it. It's been a great truck. It's taken me up into the mountains of Colorado and California and out into the desert of Arizona, the Grand Canyon. It's been, a, been an absolutely fabulous truck. When I purchased the truck, there were two things I didn't know. I didn't know that you had to rebuild the shocks every 50,000 miles or so. And I also didn't know the shocks cost $750 a piece. I guess I should have figured that last part out because the truck has a phenomenal ride when it, it, all the shocks are working as they should. When they're not, they make a lot of racket. Keep going. Okay. So that's what I was hearing back in January as I would drive across the smallest bumps out there and I decided to do something about it. I have replaced shocks on just about every car I've owned and I've rebuilt shocks on motorcycles so I didn't think this would be all that hard. So I got to work. Got the shocks off the truck using an 18 and a 15 millimeter wrench. Got them off on the ground and used a pressure washer to get them all the grime cleaned off of them. And here I'm just taking the rock guards off of the piston end of the shock. And while I'm doing that, you'll notice that there's a small little shim that I didn't see when I started that falls out on the ground. So you want to watch out for that. It's always the little things that end up biting you on these things. Now, I'm not sure why they did that, but both of my shocks had a, a shim on the front edge. The front, what, four millimeter Allen head screw that went through had a shim in between the guard and the, the eye of the shock. I guess it's to hold the, the guard away from the shock body, but I'm not real sure. I'm just going to put it back where I found it when I rebuild it. Now, I want to apologize up front. These videos kind of jump around because I'm, I'm a pretty decent mechanic, but I'm a terrible videographer, and I didn't always hit play. So there's a couple of places in here where we'll jump in between the two shocks as I'm taking them apart. Here I have the shock clamped in the vise by the, the bottom shock eye hole. It holds it pretty good for my needs. Let's, it shakes around a little bit, but it's pretty solid. I've done this before with other shocks that I've rebuilt. Now here I'm actually just loosening off the bleed holes, these little small two millimeter Allen wrenches. There's two of them. Just back them out about halfway to where they just barely stick up and you'll see the oil bubble out as the pressure starts to bleed out. Now I just left those two little Allen backed out and the oil, you can still see it bubbling out there. So I'm just letting that kind of bleed off pressure on that back side of that piston and I'm going to work on the nitrogen reservoir plug and now I guess from the factory Ford put in these little plastic heated um, plastic plug inside that Allen head so you can't get it off there. Now I continued to mess around with that plastic plug and as you can see the the oil is still trying to weep out of those bleed holes. Well, as the oil's bubbling out and down, I have to keep that wiped off. And then I'm trying to get that plastic plug out with that pick and almost stab myself a couple of times. And I just finally get tired of it. So I just did what any mechanic would do. I went and I found a, a power tool, grabbed me a cordless drill and a one eighth inch drill bit and drilled into that plastic just enough to get it curling out of that Allen head. And then the whole thing just pulled right out like it was supposed to to begin with. Well, after a few four-letter words and a little bit of blood, I was able to get the plug out. And then I went to trying to figure out what size Allen wrench that was, and everything else to this point has been metric, so I tried every metric wrench that I had. Come to find out this thing is a 3 standard Allen headed set screw or plug. So it worked out pretty well. I was able to get that out. Now, a couple of things to think about before you get to this process is this is actually the plug holding in all the nitrogen to the nitrogen chamber right there. 
underneath this plug is a little rubber plug or a pill or whatever you want to call it that you stab the needle through if you use the factory system. You run the needle through that plug, it's supposed to be self-healing. Sounds like a bizarre system to me. So when I bought the, the kits, the seals kit for these shocks, I actually bought the kits that came with the Schrader valves. Now Schrader valve is nothing more than a fancy name for a, a tire fill valve. So it looks just like the air stem on your tire that screws in this hole. We'll have to deal with that later. I say all that as a warning because even though the vent screws are backed out and they're still bleeding off oil, when I start loosening this, I can hear the nitrogen escaping. So I took a little bit of time here to let all that go get out and didn't just run this thing out because it's high, under quite a bit of pressure inside that little bitty cylinder. So it might be exciting if you just tried to back it out without letting the pressure off first. So I'm taking my time here and letting until I can't hear the nitrogen. And, and as you can tell, I'm, I've been around too much, too many loud cars and motorcycles and music and whatever. So I know I can hear it, but I can't hear it enough as it gets to a real low buzz. So I get my daughter to come over and tell me if it's still bleeding. Now, if you're not going to use the Schrader valves, you're going to want to reuse that little black plug. So you want to make sure you get that out and don't lose it because it's not all that big. I guess it's a good system. It worked for 100,000 miles on this truck without too much problem. So anyway, I'm not going to use it. I, I get it out and put it over on the table here in a minute. The way I looked at it is I've either got to buy the, the needle valve for puncturing those things and airing them up or the Schrader valves. So I went with the Schrader valves. This is one tool that not only do I recommend purchasing for this job if you're going to do it is I don't think you can do it without it. It is the wrench that you use to unscrew, break the top of the shock apart so you can get into the, the cylinder and the piston. You can get everything taken apart. Now these screw these things are screwed in tight. They're hard to get loose, and this is the one place where my vice kind of lets me down. It's not quite uh, big enough, sturdy enough, so it kind of comes loose on me here, and I've got to tighten it up. And I fought with it a lot, but but actually, like I said, the spanner wrench works perfect. I was concerned with that one not being solid enough to do this, but here I am. I'm trying to get it loose, and my and my vice starts spinning around on me. So I'm fighting with my vice as much as I'm fighting with the shock here. But like they say, with enough perseverance and leverage, you can accomplish just about anything. So I you know, used my cheater pipe, and this is just a piece of Schedule 42-inch uh, PVC that I put over that, and it actually breaks that thing loose and works pretty well. Breaking it loose was pretty tough. and I'm sitting here just catching my breath now. And this is when you notice that my vice is really not helping me out much here. So maybe someday I'll go buy me a better vice. Because <laughs> I just got lucky there. Then it's just a matter of unscrewing this cap. Going round and round. There's a lot of threads on this, this piston. On the shock, you just keep going around. It comes off now. Now I do have to tell you that the the oil inside this shock is every bit of eight years old. I guess it's been all over the United States, but it smells something terrible. You want to be real careful here that you don't you don't want to spill this around your shop or get it on you. Now there are a lot of threads on this cap. You just keep unscrewing it until it can lift off. And somewhere about here, you start thinking, man, something died in my shop and smells really bad. But the shock is full of oil, or should be, unless you've had a leak. So pull out the piston really slowly, because it's sitting in a lot of oil, and lay it over to the side. Now, my original thought on this was... I would measure the oil that came out of my shocks because I didn't have any leaks that I ever saw. I never had any oil on the shock or on the ground. And I thought, well, that'll tell me how much to pour back in. But after reviewing how it was built, I kind of scrapped that idea. Now, when you're pouring the oil out of this shock reservoir, you want to be real careful because there's an inner sleeve that is just stuck in there, held in by that cap, and then the bottom fit and it can fall out. So you want to be real careful with that. It does go in a specific way, and if you look at it real close when you take it out, 
you'll see that it has kind of a chamfer on one end and it's got holes at the top. So you can kind of, you know which way it has to go in there. This thing is a, basically a, the, the cylinder that that piston moves up and down and it's got the relief holes in the side that maybe you can see on the video, maybe you can't, you'll see it on yours. Now one of the things I really do like about this type of thing is I'm doing something new that I've never seen before so I get to just figure out how something works and you can see the you can see the piston valve there in my left hand and then the, 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 uh, the actually the bottom of the shock is in my left hand but it that piston moves up and down inside that cylinder and that's what does the shock absorption it's it really is an elegant design I guess that's why they cost seven hundred and fifty dollars a piece because there's a lot of engineering and manufacturing that went into this shock. Now that I have the main piston and cylinder part of the shock apart, I'm going to go to work on the reservoir trying to get this cap that's kind of stuck right in the end here and there's a snap ring that holds it down but this is where I'm getting the little black plug out of it just so I can kind of see what's in there. I realize looking at this video that it's hard to see that little plug, but it's just a little rubber plug or pill that sits underneath that Allen head screw and it just holds the nitrogen in that in that reservoir. It's probably one of the reasons why the nitrogen leaks out, but uh, who might have known. What I can tell you is this cap in this nitrogen chamber was stuck. And then you'll get a, a little bigger hammer and a little piece of Dell running, I knocked it down just a little bit so I could get to the snap ring. Once I get that knocked down out of the way I can start working on that C-clip. Now I have a couple of different sizes of C-clip pliers but neither one of them would work on this clip. It actually broke this little pair here that I used and I had to go replace the tips. I was able to finally get the both clips out using those pliers and a couple of screwdrivers but it would probably be a lot nicer if you had a really big solid pair of snap ring pliers to use on these things and I'll say this in between taking these apart and then putting them back together I actually made me a good pair of snap ring pliers out of a, an old pair of needle nose that I had so it was much simpler to put these back together than it was to try to get these apart Now I worked on this snap ring and my pliers for a good 12 to 15 minutes to get this thing out of this out of this, this slot that it's in. I guess it's been stuck together for a good what 10 years, so it's kind of hard to get things broke apart when they've been together that long in a in a vehicle. So we all have that problem, but I did finally get it out, and I was able to start going to work on getting that the reservoir cap out. Now what I'm doing here is I'm having to build a tool to get the cap out of this reservoir. It's got a couple of O-rings that ride inside of it that seal it and it rides up and down inside that sleeve, inside that cylinder, and it's kind of there's no way to get a hold of it. So you have to have a bolt that you can screw down in there and then you have to be able to get a hold of something and pull. And that's so that's what I'm doing here. I took actually took a an old head stud that I had in my toolbox in a in a big washer and a nut screwed the, the, the end of the head stud that fit the, the threads in the cap, screwed it in, put the washer on and the nut on, and then, and then started wiggling it out. Now this was my first pass at this tool. It probably wasn't long enough. Like I said, it was just a head stud. It couldn't have been more than about three inches long, and, but I was able to make it work. So uh, down inside of that reservoir, there is a a bottom to the gas reservoir that had, is a piece of aluminum with a with a quarter inch hole that's threaded that you can thread a longer tool into and then pull that out. So at night I made a this evening I made a couple of, of tools that I could use to get that out and then I made a little longer one that made pulling this cap off a little bit simpler. Now here's where my videographer skills fell apart on me because I either did not record pulling that bottom of that gas chamber out or I lost it. So what I did here, this is me pulling the second shock apart and you can see I've got a little bit longer tool to pull that cap out. It worked a whole lot better. 
I don't know if you can tell or not, but when I'm working on things, I get a little bit OCD and I start trying to keep everything in its place and everything cleaned up. It's just kind of a habit I've gotten into over the years. So you're going to have to have a couple of tools to take these out. You've already seen the 3 8 by 24. I used a head stud for the first one and then I made one a little bit longer that was about 9 inches long and it was very helpful in giving me the leverage I needed to pull that top cap off. Now the bottom of the nitrogen chamber is an aluminum, round aluminum plug with O-rings on the outside and a quarter by 20 thread machined right into the middle. So the quarter by 20 has got to be at least 12 inches long. I just used an old piece of bar stock I had laying around that I cut some threads on one end and then bent the other over so I had something to hang on to. Now earlier I had said I, I thought I would measure the, the volume of liquid that came out of the shock when I emptied it. I uh, decided that probably wasn't the best way of doing it, so I think the best way to do it is probably what I'm doing here is measuring the nitrogen chamber, how far down that bottom plug is. I came up with seven and a half inches roughly on both of my shocks, so I think that was a pretty good measurement for me for when I rebuild it. That's how far down I'm going back in with that. So here I'm just using that, that homemade tool I made with a with bend on the end, and I'm going to go in and thread it into that that bottom of that nitrogen chamber and pull that out. It's just about the right length. I almost made it too short because it almost, my, my bend over almost hit the, the cylinder part of the shock, as you can see. So you'll see it comes out really easy. It slides right up to the top and then it gets kind of hung up in that O-ring groove, which I think is a little bit uh, boogered up from me trying to get that O-ring out or maybe just from being in there originally. But I'm going to go back in with some emery cloth and try to clean the top edge of that up and take any, any sharp edges off. Now I couldn't find any evidence of this, but I think this, uh, this bottom piece of this nitrogen chamber is probably the clunk I was hearing when, when I would hit uh, bumps. I think the pressure had bled off on my shocks and it was sliding up and down in that chamber, maybe hitting the bottom and making a clunk. I'm not sure. I didn't see any marks or anything to confirm that. Just a theory on my part. So now we're at the fun part of the dismantling. This is the, the piston, basically, that slides up and down inside of that, that cylinder. You see standing up over there. It's the mechanical part of the shock. Everything else is just fluid transfer. So I'm going to bolt this piston using the eye into my, into my vise here. I'm going to bolt it up. This is actually the bottom of the shock, if you think about it. Now, it's really important to remember right here that when you unstack this shock, this piston assembly, that it all goes and lays out and goes back together exactly like it came apart. Now the nut on the top of this piston stack is a 19 millimeter, uh, but a three quarter inch works just as well. Take your pick. One more warning, like I said, when you unstack these, they come off pretty easy. They just slide right off that, that piston. So when you pull them off, put them into an order that you understand. One other thing, this valve assembly that I'm taking off here has multiple washers of different varying sizes stacked inside of it on top and bottom of that valve. So I left it just like it was. Now this blue piece that I'm pulling off is the bearing assembly and seals, and that's where we're going to spend the majority of our time during the rebuild phase or in, in the next video that I post up here. Thanks for watching. I will get the rebuild video posted as soon as I can.